Good morning, folks. We'll start with Vesta and the Dawn mission seeing water on the surface with a number of other interesting compounds as well. When Japan and China began fighting over uninhabited islands and the fishing rights to Fukushima irradiated waters, the political theater has gotten a bit silly for my taste. A couple equatorial quakes in the mid-Atlantic near Ascension Island, one yesterday and one this morning. The British Virgin Islands are continuing their quake swarm to a ridiculous degree, beginning to look like Southern California down there, and a landslide in Nepal has killed a number of hikers. Folks, you will notice only one area of purple freeze right on top of central Ohio. I promise it is that cold here right now. She was just a tropical storm two days ago, now on the verge of becoming the third super typhoon in two months. I remember when a level 4 typhoon was a globally recognized disaster. RSOE already has this at level 5, but we'll stick with 4 for now. I suppose some of you want to discuss the anomaly heading from Canada to Africa. First, this measures precipitable water in the air using a microwave spectrum, but it does not show microwaves or radio waves. If anything, it shows a brief surge of water through the atmosphere, but it could be data error, like this white blotch in the South Pacific, or the grainy color shifts in the warmer Western Pacific orange and red. You know it really doesn't move like that. It's much more fluid. I have heard someone say that this triggered the quakes in Canada. I doubt it, but if so, there was a 24-hour delay between the anomaly and the quakes. Something a lot more concerning, yesterday I reported two gamma bursts we received, and yesterday there was data missing on the bar toll. Not anymore. When they add data after the fact, and the anomalies show up on both cosmic rays and muons, it's tough to argue that it's data error. These do happen to match the gamma burst timeline. Either the last corona hole missed, or it's a weak one, because our solar wind speed has been falling there in the yellow. The slight density elevation at the end is not a concern at the moment. There's the Earth footprint on the Earth side, northwest. Still have nine magnetic connections on the front side. These two are getting close to the back side, turning the limb, while that one straggler simply refuses to leave his base on the far side. No big flares, but some long duration activity yesterday. A big eruption did take place, but it is headed away from Earth here. On the north here, there are two separate active regions. You can tell by the points of spreading, which takes careful review over hours. Or you could just check for a big leading negative spot in red. If this was on the south, the big leading spot would be positive blue. Anywho, we have a good mixing of polarities, but the trailing umbra are small and roughly linear. There's a 50-50 chance we should just move our focus to the southeastern limb, where a sizable spot is turning in now. I'll leave you with the last day. Plasma filament turning away to the right, bright active regions coming in from the left. Five days until Uranus geocentrically opposes the sun and things start to get interesting. It's going on 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.